I'm Jonathan Knight, and this is B-Movie Madness, and the movie I'm going to be reviewing tonight, well, the one I'm going to be reviewing tonight is a brand new release from SOV Horror, and it's a special one. Now, I know I say that a lot, but this one is definitely special, because it's a sequel to not only one, but two anthology films I reviewed in the past. And those movies are Zombarella's House of Horrors, and Natasha Nye's Boudoir Blood. So... The one I'm going to be reviewing tonight is the one, the only, the legendary, Topless Tori's Tuma of Terror. Now, as usual, I will put a better look at the cover on screen. The cover was done by Tony of SOV Horror. He also did the cover art, I believe, for the other two. No. He did not do the one from Zombie. Nope, Jason Gilmore did those two, but Tony did this one, and it matches the other two perfectly. Um, now, you know, like it says by the name, our new horror host is Topless Tori. And I know you're asking me, does she deliver on her name? Absolutely. In fact, it's going to be very hard for me to put a photo of her on screen without censoring it. So I'll probably put a censored version on screen. And if you want to see it uncensored, you can always buy the movie. And find out for yourself. There is like a, um insert in here. Very um not safe for work insert. So... I won't be showing that, or I'll censor that one as well. Um, now, what I'm going to do is what I do with all anthology films I review. I'm going to review the stories one by one, tell you what it's about, who directed it, um, and tell you what I thought of it then. But unlike most other anthologies I reviewed, much like the two previous movies, um, there is um, about 23 fake commercials, trailers, and then ads. And there's also the horror hosts segments. So I'm going to be reviewing all the trailers and commercials at the very end i will i'll tell you the name of them what i thought of them and who directed them um those are going to be very short and to the point reviews because it's only 30 second to minute long ads but i want to give everybody their due because a lot of people worked very hard on this movie and you can tell with every single second you were wa you're watching this that the people who were doing this really really liked what they were doing but to start off what did I think of the topless Tori segments? Well, she was topless the entire time, so automatically it gets a two thumbs up for me. Uh, but she's funny and charming, and Tony of SOB Horror directed those segments. And there's really not much more I can say that she just had her top 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 off all the whole I can't speak. All I'm thinking is the titties. But she had her top off the entire time. And she completely sold me on the movie. Mm -hmm. Now she's hosting Tales from the Mausoleum Part 3, the other two movies had Part 1 and 2, directed by Fred Owen Wood, who is a rascal, I tell you. He's a rascal. I'll tell you more about him later. But the three stories, the the first and third one was directed by Joseph Vogley, who did Specimen 6, and Last Temptation of Bible Boy, which I reviewed in the past. And the middle story is directed by Joe Sherlock, who, if you're a fan of my channel, you know who Joe Sherlock is because I reviewed a shit ton of his movies. Um, all the stuff that he did for, um, he released through SOV Horror and all the stuff that he um, released himself. So let me go and start with the first story. Now the first story is called Bikini Church Ladies of the Dead. And if you're not sold on the title alone, you can get out of here. Um, this one is directed by Joseph Ogley, who, as I discussed, did Specimen 6 and Last Temptation of the Bible. Well, he's worked a lot with Joe Sherlock. And there's a few actors in this, one in particular that he wor has worked with Joe Sherlock. And I will mention her in a minute. But this one is about a church that is closing down. And the ladies of the church don't want it closed down, but they have to raise $26,000. So they do whatever they can. At first, they try to do bake sales and lawn work and all that. And it just ain't cutting it. So they decide to do a bikini car wash. And that is a freaking great idea until they get sprayed with radioactive chemicals and they become flesh-eating zombies. And it, I think you can guess what happens after that. Things get really bloody very fast. But do they? are they able to raise the money? You'll have to find out by watching. Um, like I said, Joseph Ogley directed this one. And um, of the few things I've seen from him so far, Specimen 6 is probably my favorite of the lot. But this is actually really, really fun as well. Donna Rooney, who I've talked about a million times, um, she's worked with Joe Sherlock a lot. She's actually the, in all three of the stories in this movie, which is amazing. Um, she does a fantastic job. In fact, the entire cast um, did a great job. Ruby Solis, she has a small little part. She was in Specimen 6. Um, 
but she did a great job as well. Um, and the zombie makeup, it's just green paint, but it works for what it's, you know, what it is. Um, the story is fast and fun. It's really actually funny. There's a scene with a pervert coming to the car wash involving Don and Rooney that's really flat out hilarious. Um, and there is some gore in this too. The gore is your good old fashioned micro budget do it yourself gore with hot dogs and fake blood and fake this and that. But it works. It, it works, you know. And it has a great ending. A very satisfying ending. Especially for the church ladies. The bikini church ladies. Of the dead. Or of the damned. Um, Joseph says in the commentary. There's a couple of different titles. But yeah, it's fast. It's fun. It's gory. And it's stupid. But it's my kind of stupid. So I loved it. Um, so far, we're off to, you know, great start. Now, our second story is Joe Sherlock's Bloody Red Lips of Blood, Part 2. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, that sounds familiar. Well, it is familiar because it was the first Joe Sherlock movie I ever reviewed. It was the first one I've ever seen, and I loved it. So when I heard there was going to be a sequel on here, I was like, hell yeah. But I was, what I was really surprised about, it's not only a sequel to Bloody Red Lips of Blood. It's also a sequel to a Sasquatch segment from an anthology film that he made called Beneath the Dead Moon or Beneath a Dead Moon. I always forget which one it is. Um, and it was one of my favorite segments from the anthology because I had John Bowker in it. Um, and I love John Bowker, Dale Wilson, and I love Dale Wilson. So this movie serves as a sequel to both of those. And as a result, it is completely, utterly insane. It's completely dumb as a stunt, but in the best way possible. There is so much fart jokes in it. I love fart jokes. I was cool with it. Um, there's a lot of blood. There's a lot of boobs. Sasquatch is in it vampires are in it it's almost like a kitchen sink approach like joe's like fuck it let's throw everything in there i like that approach i no i don't like it i love that approach so as a sequel to both of those things both of the things i liked i was um very happy about that um the acting is good you got donna rooney again rock and roll she always does a good job roxy mountains is in it dale wilson john bowker um Overall, the acting is good. I mean, Roxy Mountain and Donna Rooney always do good jobs. Dale Wilson, it's always good seeing him. John Bowker is one of my favorite of uh, the Sherlock actors, and he's really funny. You know, he farts a lot in it, so I appreciate that. But, yeah, it was fun. There's a lot of fake blood. There's lots of boobs. For Sasquatch, what more could you want from a B-movie than all those things in a, like, 20-minute? I think it's 20 minutes long, 20-minute chunk. So, yeah, I loved Bloody Red Lips of Blood, too. Do I prefer it to the first movie? I'm going to be honest with you. I prefer the first movie slightly. Um, but the first movie was my first Joe Sherlock movie. So it's really hard to top that one because that was, it was my first time. But the sequel was still a shit ton of fun. It is a true slice of B movie madness. Now our third and final story is called Ann Cow. And it's directed by Joseph Ogley who did the first segment. Um, this one, I have to say, of the three, is my favorite, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, the story of this involves um, a grim, le grim reaper-like spirit called the Ann Cow, who is like a grave digger but for spirits. And he ends up being unleashed from his box, and he ends up crashing a Halloween party, and as you can expect, lots of deaths ensues. So, yeah. First off, the reason I like that one so much is because the story was legitimately very, very good. This one had the best story of the movie. It was a very interesting story, and I never even heard the Ann Cow before. This is the first time I ever heard about it. So I was like, huh, you know, learn something new every day. Um, but it was a really cool story, and it's set on Halloween at a Halloween party. What's cooler than that? Another thing that really surprised me is there's actually some pretty good uh, makeup effects in this. There's a slit wrist effect going down this way this way um it's really well done i thought it was amazing you know usually when you watch you know these little micro budget movies the effects are very do-it-yourself they don't look great but they're charming and fun this one actually looked legitimately good and there's also a slit rope uh, throat that looks pretty good it delivers on the court and as usual it delivers on the boobs there's boobs throughout this whole damn movie this movie's a tit fest but um yeah um i was really surprised by the makeup effects there's some nagore the story was interesting donna rooney is here again and she does, as usual, a great job. She ends, She's the one that encounters the spirit with the slit riff, wrist. Um, but yeah, I was like, holy shit, the story for this one is really good. And I'm not saying holy shit, like, they were, the other stories were shitty. But this one was legitimately very, very good. It was very creative, and it was a lot of fun. The acting was surprisingly decent. And Joseph Wogley, who also has an acting role in his, the first story, has, um, is an ending for the rest of the one, and it's very, very funny. 
very satisfying at the same time. I don't know why. But yeah, uh, Ann Cow was, um, in fact, um, but the funny thing about it is my favorite segment of Zombrella's House of Horror and Natasha Knight's Blue Bar Blood was third and final stories. Seems like third time's the charm. But that's not because the first two stories stunk. I like the first two stories of the previous movies as well. But this, they really ended this anthology on a bang. It's a really cool story. And add that with the other stories. You've got zombies. You've got evil spirits. You've got vampires. You've got Sasquatch. It is a B-movie buffet. So, overall, Top of Stories to Matera was so much fucking fun. Man, I know I'm saying, I'm like, I'm... You know, lowering my voice is because, you know, you know, Steve, I'm just kidding. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Um, it's full of gore. It's full of boobs. had great music. It had vampires, Sasquatch, zombies. It had everything I personally would want in an anthology film. And, and done with that beautiful DIY charm, which I love so much. Oh, thank God for micro-budget filmmakers like Joe Sherlock, Tony Massello, and Joseph Ogley. You guys are a gift to the world, and I'm not kissing your ass. I'm kind of kissing your ass, but, you know. I love the movie. Topless Stories to Matera was a lot of fun. Um, and one, if you're a fan of the first two anthologies, then you definitely need to get this. I'm sure you probably already got it, but this was a lot of fun. Now, before I end this, I'm going to go through the commercials that are throughout the um, entire movie. They're played before the stories, sometimes in the middle of the stories. Um, and I'm going to go by order in the movie, um, So, um, and I'm going to give my quick opinion. The first one's called Psychic Sex Line, and it's by Caleb Elijah, and it is a mixture of a psychic phone line and a sex phone line, and I don't know about you, but that sounds fucking amazing. That's a beautiful combination, and it was a fun little commercial. Second one is Data Mate Kevin by John Ward, who's a filmmaker and actor. He's a, he directed the Xmas movies. Um, and in the Data Mate commercial, he plays a right winger. Um, and he really, really nails the personality of one. It's a really well made and well acted commercial. So kudos to John Ward. And please check out the Xmas movies, people. They're really cool. Um, the third commercial is called Tainted Flesh by, by Lucien Eisenbach or Eisenach. Please apologize if I mispronounced your name. I don't mean to do it, so please, please forgive me. Now, Tain and Flesh is a trailer, and it's about this madman who goes around killing and torturing women. And the effects work, it's a really well done. There's a scene where he pulls out a woman's fingernails, and that's the one thing in movies that makes me uneasy is seeing fingernails ripped off. So this trailer may be uneasy, and kudos for that. Um, number four is Gonzu Knife by David Black, and it's a Gonzu Knife commercial, but with a horror twist. It ends with a castration, which I don't know about you, but that's always a good thing in my book. Really well done commercial. The fifth one is The Grave Ones, and this is a movie trailer done by Ron Ford. And I knew this is Ron Ford. As soon as I saw the corpses coming out of the ground, I said, that's Ron Ford. And sure enough, it was, and it was an awesome commercial. I particularly like the Frankenstein monster in the front that came out. You know, that's always cool. Um, according to Tony on the commentary track, the effects guy, Mitch Tanner, Tanner, he ended up passing away. So, um, rest in peace. I thought your effects work in the commercial. And the effects work you did for um, Ron Zeller movies was awesome as well. Thank you, good sir. Number six is called Murder Buddy by Dean Honolulu. Ha. <laughs> I announced that. Dean Ha. Halloween. I'm, I'm sorry. Now, what is Murder Buddy? It is like a hitman. What's your buddy? So he'll go kill the people that are pissing you off. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I need that Murder Buddy. Um, number seven is VH, VHS Shop. It's by Ernstly Pygolov, a Russian filmmaker. It's a cool little commercial. Tony did, I believe, um, the voiceover work for it. Really well done. Number eight is called Fog Ship. And this one was done by David John Foster, and um, he filmed this on an actual ship, um, and it was really creepy and really cool, and it really added a lot to the commercial. This one I would like to see made into a movie. A couple, the the grave ones I would like to see made into a movie as well, but Fog Ship will look really cool. Number nine is Weed by Tony Marcel. It's a weed commercial, really not much more than that to it, but well done. Number ten is Data Mate, Becky Lou by Anna Zayden. Um, much like our data bank commercials, it's really funny and well done. I thought she did a really good job on it, so congratulations. Yeah. Next one is 1900 Lucifer by Joshua 
Coughlin. Um, all I gotta say about this one is, hell yeah, really well done as well. Um, the next one is Kids Math by Frank Olin Lund, and really, do I have to tell you what we're, what it's about? Kids Math. Enough said, but it's funny. Uh, number 13 is 1900 Mind Powers by Mike Holmberg. Um, this one was actually really well done as well. I thought Mark, who also acted in it, did a really good job. He was a really good actor, and it was really well done. Um, uh, number 14 is Angelo American Church by Fred Olin Lund. It's one of those religious commercials, and it, he pretty much nails the look and feel of them. And there's actually a reference to this first story in the movie, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, next one is Pizza Pig by Fred Olin Wood, and much like Kids Meth, it um, it really explains itself. But there's a really funny um, cops eat free at Pizza Pig. That's it was really funny. Um, one after that is one nine hundred nine seven six Burt by Matt Mostio. Again, I apologize if I mispronounce your name. That one's actually pretty fun too. It has a um, horror host as well as um, Lilith Bloodworth, not Bloodworth. Hold on. I, I can't remember right at this moment, but um, uh, she's really, really, I don't know if you have her on, on Facebook, she's really cool. Um, next one, 17, is Toby Khan's Paranova Exterminator by Stephen Haar. Um, this one is really cool as well. Actually, I was looking throughout the list, I was like, which one's what I call if they existed? That one I would call because it, um, it's really well done. I really like the footage they had in it, especially the zombies. I thought it was really cool. Next one, 18, is Sparkling Orgasm Mind by Tony Marcella, and do I really need to tell you what it's about? But it has a reference to pumping iron in it, and because of that, it might be one of my, it might be my favorite. Because, you know, pumping iron, watch it. Um, number 19 is 1900 Data Mate Eugene by Tim Ritter. This is a sequel to a uh, Data Mate ad from Zombarella's House of Horse and Natasha Knight's Blue Hour of Blood. It's the continuation of the character Eugene played by Tim Ritter. So, um, if you were a fan of his um, Data Mate ads from the first two, you'll get an absolute kick out of it. It's fucking hilarious. Really well done. Um, next one is 20 Carpet World by John Ward. He was also the Data Mate Kevin. Um, it feels like a legitimate carpet commercial you would see on TV. Um, like John Ward's personality, he really nails that um, particular look particular voice of a person in that kind of commercial. And there's a reference to Natasha Knight in it, so that's always fun. Um, number 21 is Data Mate Cody by Co Cody Tudor. Um, Cody did a, an amazing job acting in it. Um, I don't know his work. I know he's a friend of mine on Facebook, but I might have to talk to him some more because I thought he legitimately did a great job acting in this, and it was funny and well done. Number 22 is Vote Game and Fox by Stephen Bloodworth. Steven is a good friend of mine, um, so I was really glad to see that he had an ad in this, and it's a, po a pol politician ad about um, trying to keep smutty movies away from your children, um, and he really, he did a great job acting in it. And the final one, 23, 900 Blast Hards is the one I did, and all I'm going to say is that I had fun making it, and it was really cool seeing it um, in the movie. I had, a, you know, I'm very critical of my own stuff, so I kind of looked at it like, oh, but I'm glad it was included, and um, I hope people enjoy it. Now, as for the extras on the movie, um, there's an audio commentary with cast and crew. Tony Marcello, he does all the host segments in the trailers. Uh, Joseph Ogley does his two segments, and Joe Shirley does his segment. And they all talk about how the movie was done. Tony talks about who did what commercial, um, how he got them involved. He talks about the host segments. Um, Joseph Ogley talks about, you know, how he came up with the idea for um, both his segments. Um, I think the non-cow was started off as a comic book thing that he was doing. Joe Sherlock talks about how, you know, he got, you know, did it as both a sequel to both movies. Um, talks about how there's certain bloopers that were kept in the movie because they're pretty funny. But overall, it's a very informative commentary track. Um, like, you know, if you're a fan of low-budget filmmaking and you're interested in learning low-budget filmmaking, this is the kind of stuff you need to listen to because these guys are the ones that go out there with little to no money and get it done. So I recommend giving a listen. There's a bonus commercial reel, and I actually wrote down the names of them. I don't have the directors. I wrote them down very quickly. But the commercials are Hack Horror Show Minifigures, 1900 Doc B Movie. That's the second commercial I did. Um, I had fun doing that one as well. There's Serial Killer Action Figures, which I thought was really funny. There is Quarantine Gore Terror, Suck It and See. 
and that one's done by my good friend Gort Filth. Um, it was really cool seeing something of his in, um, on the DVD. Um, there was Uncle Spooky's Funeral Home, which was really, really funny. There was 1900 Madam Anna, which is, um, I believe, Anna Zayden, the, the second commercial she did. Um, it was pretty well done as well. There was Burger Hut 3, which was well done. And then there was Madam Mean Me You. <laughs> Meanie You. <laughs> that was pretty funny, too. I think that's actually the first commercial. Um, and it's listed as last, um, um, the message I got from Tony. Um, but yeah, you know, it's really cool that he included those as a bonus feature. I'm really glad that, you know, there was some use for them. Um, other than that, there is the trailer reel, the SOV Horror trailer reel, which is on all the SOV Horror lists. And then there is the insert card, which I'm going to do my best. The sensor. Yeah, really cool. <laughs> So all in all, as I said early, I highly recommend this one. If you're a fan of the first two, then you're definitely going to want this one because it delivers everything you'd want in a cheesy, crazy, insane B-movie like this. And I want to thank Tony Marcello, Joseph Logley, and Joe Sherlock for entertaining me for 90 minutes. And I want to give a big, big, big thank you to every single person who um, submitted a commercial or trailer or ad for this. Um, you guys all rock, and it was really cool seeing all these creative people into one project. As for my next review, my next review is actually going to be a sequel to Natasha Knight's Boudoir of Blood, and it's going to be the final movie in the um, in the anthology series of the Tales from Majilian. This is going to be part four, so I'm looking forward to reviewing that. I might review it this well. It's Sunday, so I'll maybe review it at the end of next week. But I'm um, looking forward to doing that because there's a lot of cool people involved in that one as well. But if you like my channel. Give me a thumbs up, ring the bell, and let me know down below. How are you doing? I asked the anthology question a million times before. You can tell me if you want, but how are you doing? Are you doing all right? I hope you are. But that's it for now. I'm Jonathan Knight, and it's been B-Movie Badness. Thanks for watching.